G'day, and welcome to today's Mum 36 Rebuild episode, where we take a look at the difference between epoxy and polyester resin. Running through what I see as the seven key differences between the two different resins to help you understand which is best for you depending on the job at hand. So when we take a look at the resins, the seven main differences are the bonding strength, resistance to wear, cost comparison, resistance to moisture, the cure time, or how long it takes to go hard, the odor or smell, plus the shelf life. That is how long you can leave them in between jobs before the resin's no longer uh, viable to use for any repairs or jobs that you have. So let's start by looking at the bonding strength. You'll see that the epoxy resin wins out nearly four times the strength, 2000 labs per square inch, compared to 500 for the polyester resin. So if your job involves joining things together or there's pressure against the surfaces that you're joining, um, trying to pull them apart, maybe the epoxy is the better choice for that particular type of job. Next one, resistance to wear. Epoxy, much harder wearing. Uh, polyester, more fragile. With many things, you get what you pay for. So the epoxy resin, um, I think has a lot of advantages, but it is more expensive. So depending on the job you're doing and how much resin you're using in that job, it, it could be a big point for you. Particularly if you're looking at maybe buying a new boat where the builder has the option to either take the uh, epoxy or the polyester type, you can see up to 20, 30% difference in price for the same model of boat, depending on whether it's built out of the epoxy or out of polyester. Resistance to moisture, which we know is critically important. Got a link up here to a video that talks about fiberglass osmosis and what goes wrong if you get moisture into your boat. Once again, the epoxy resin uh, has advantages here where it's um, very, very moisture resistant. If you're leaving your boat in there for long periods of time, uh, not taking it out and dry docking it in any way, shape or form, epoxy resin will absorb very little, if any, water whereas polyester resin will, which can lead to that fiberglass osmosis. The next one we look at is cure time, or the time it takes it for it to go hard. Uh, polyester resin, much shorter, can be cured or hard within less than an hour, depending on how much hardened resin you put in. It will be more brittle the, the faster you cure it. Um, but you know, just say you're in a regatta, you've had an incident, maybe there's two race day, you need to get back in the water, polyester resin might be the uh, ideal thing for that type of job. Uh, if you've got the bonding strength requirement we mentioned earlier and the time on your hands, then maybe the epoxy resin is the, the go for you. The next one is odor. Not massively important, but if you're working in confined spaces down in the cabin or maybe you know up in the bow of your boat, um, the, the epoxy resin will have a, a, a greater smell. So if you don't have uh, any airflow, um, or, or mask or equipment to you know, protect you from the smell, um, you, know, you might find that the polyester resin uh, is easier to work with. And the final one is shelf life, or how long you leave it on the shelf uh, with, without it uh, going off or going hard itself. Um, Epoxy resin. Much longer shelf life, um, so if you're doing lots of small jobs um, over a long period of time, you, you might actually get uh, more benefit uh, out of going for the so there you have it, a quick review of the seven things that I look at when uh, choosing the type of resin I'm gonna use uh, for a particular fiberglass job that I'm doing. Um, we're now gonna go over to the Mum 36 rebuild and take a look at two jobs where we chose epoxy resin uh, to help us prepare uh, Jabberwocky for her evolution into GTR. Remember back to the sanding and surveys episode? where one of the issues we had was with loose stanchions where moisture had got into the core of the deck uh, you know creating a, a, a big issue the only way to fix this was to cut away the foam that had basically disintegrated with all the moisture in it replace it with some marine ply uh, epoxying it back up at the same time we took the liberty to create some under deck plates these plates, when joined uh, through with the bolts from the top side, 
really spread the load uh, and will prevent the movement that created the issue in the first place. Second and far bigger epoxy job was to waterproof below the waterline. After we dried out the hull with our homemade hot pack, we then needed to layer up four coats of epoxy resin to waterproof the underside to prevent further um, moisture seeping into the boat and possible osmosis. We used the Hempel uh, epoxy, uh, creating a really smooth finish, which should uh, have us really streamlined and fast flowing once we finish with Andy Fowl and get it back in the water. So that concludes today's video. Don't forget to subscribe with the button up here uh, and hit the bell to ensure you get notified of all our upcoming videos. Won't be too long till we uh, share the next video where we look at uh, GTR's paint job. Uh, and I've got some videos linked over here with some other content uh, from the Bottom Up Boats channel. Until next time, fair winds and happy sailing.